Outside the researcher's entrance to the National Archives in Washington, under a statue, is etched the inscription, what's past is prologue. And inside is the proof of that. These boxes contain thousands of pages of declassified records from U.S. diplomats stationed in Kabul. Over half a century old, they offer tantalizing insight into why America's war in Afghanistan today is looking more like the failed Russian occupation of two decades ago. In this notebook can be found a dispatch from a U.S. military attaché describing his February 1945 meeting with the Afghan army chief. The general, Abdul Ghani Khan, boasts Afghanistan has been invaded 71 times, but never conquered. That its religion and discipline are its greatest strength. And that all Afghans would fight to the death to defeat any forces which attempted to invade the country. The Pashtuns are a brave, proud and fiercely independent people who regard themselves as the equal of any man. The Afghan's ferocious warrior spirit is something the United States Information Agency would trumpet 40 years later in this propaganda film, again saved among the public records in the National Archives. The film warns against the folly of any foreign invader believing that military might will pacify the Afghan populace. Brave determined and skilled fighters in mountain warfare. Throughout history, the Pashtuns have successfully fought to preserve their independence, and all attempts to conquer them have ultimately ended in failure. The bitter irony is that the U.S. Central Command studied the Soviet military campaign and carefully noted its shortcomings in a secret report entitled Lessons from the War in Afghanistan, which is among the archives holdings declassified a few years ago. Among its conclusions, the Russians, anxious to portray their invasion as a limited incursion, went in too light. This, American strategists concluded, had a significant effect. Insufficient forces were available. So when major operations were conducted in one part of the country, forces had to be drawn from other areas, leaving those areas vulnerable to insurgent activities. It was a mistake that, despite its better judgment, the U.S. would repeat and take seven years to correct. But the 1980s videos and documents in the National Archives illustrate another paradox of war. Just because one strategy fails doesn't mean the converse will succeed. Like the U.S. is doing now, the Soviets poured tens of thousands of reinforcements into Afghanistan to try to turn the tide only to suffer heavy casualties and eventual defeat. Now, in a similar strategy shift, the U.S. is more than doubling its troop strength in Afghanistan. Even as former spymaster, now Defense Secretary Robert Gates warns Congress it might not work. My experience on this is shaped very much uh, by my experience uh, in uh, CIA and fighting the Soviets in Afghanistan in the 1980s, where the Soviets with 110, 120,000 troops didn't care about civilian casualties and they still lost. If you don't have the right strategy and if you don't have the Afghan people on your side, you will not win in Afghanistan because, as the Admiral said, they are a warrior nation. Also on the shelves of the archives is this 1981 documentary in which a British television crew follows the Mujahideen as they mount an attack. We had taken a rooftop position in front of our city to try and hit the customs house with a recoilless rifle. The film also documents another failing of the Soviet strategy, the superpowers' over-reliance on air attacks, indiscriminate bombings that produced large numbers of civilian casualties which only served to harden the Afghan resistance. It would be another mistake the Americans would repeat. Although thousands of documents from the Soviet era have been declassified over the years, many remain secret or have been heavily edited. This 1984 CIA document notes the Soviets are losing one helicopter a day. But like many such documents, it also contains a large block of white space, where sensitive information has been deleted. You won't find much mention in the National Archives of the covert CIA operation to funnel top-of-the-line American-made stingers to the Afghan guerrillas, shoulder-fired heat-seeking missiles 
brought down Russian helicopters with stunning effectiveness and may have broken the Soviet will. For that, you need to turn to open sources, like the movie Charlie Wilson's War, based on George Cryle's well-documented book, or check out Robert Gates' 1996 memoir, From the Shadows. A Soviet tank leads the conflict. The U.S. learned quite a bit from the Soviet misadventure in Afghanistan, but also found noting the lessons much easier than implementing them. For instance, in a 1987 document from the Russian archives, a Soviet colonel writes to the Kremlin, the experience of the past years clearly shows that the Afghan problem cannot be solved by military means only. It's surprising how little has changed. In a recent visit to the Afghan war zone, U.S. National Security Advisor Jim Jones said this will not be won by the military alone. Jones told the Washington Post's Bob Woodward, the piece of the strategy that has to work in the next year is economic development. If that's not done right, there are not enough troops in the world to succeed. The Army's 1989 Lessons Learned report begins with a famous exchange between two colonels, one American, one North Vietnamese, who met shortly after the Vietnam War. You know you never defeated us on the battlefield, said the American. The North Vietnamese colonel replied, that may be so, but it's also irrelevant. When General Boris Gromov withdrew the last Russian troops from Afghanistan, he made a similar boast. No Soviet garrison or major outpost was ever overrun. Like the U.S. in Vietnam, the Russians had never lost a battle, but still lost the war. And in what may be the ultimate irony, American strategists berated the Russians for missing the obvious lessons from U.S. blunders in Vietnam. The Soviet failure to learn from the U.S. caused them to make many of the same errors, the report concluded. The other hard-learned lesson of wars is that they inevitably have unintended consequences. The day the Russians left was counted as a major triumph for the U.S., the CIA privately touted it as the most successful covert operation ever. In his 1996 book, Robert Gates wrote it was a great victory. Now Afghans could resume fighting among themselves, and hardly anyone cared. That is, until a dozen years later, when many of the same Afghan freedom fighters the U.S. had supported turned against the country that had helped them humble a superpower invader. <laughs>